Madam Speaker, to make our health system more efficient and to use our allocated funds more effectively, we are centralizing procurement and bringing in professional contract management to direct new construction. The new hospital in Bar, where government joined forces with Bar Chamber of Commerce, has the potential to benefit around $140,000. It's an excellent example of how this work can effectively produce a well-designed facility on time and on budget. The new Bar Hospital is being built to World Health Organization standards and will be a bridge between the smaller Tavu and Raki Raki hospitals and the larger Lotoko Hospital. So it's more than just a hospital, it is a critical link in a system designed to deliver quality care. We'll also begin purchasing generic drugs from India, as the health systems in nations like Canada and Australia do, in order to obtain critical medications at the lowest cost. Why should Fijians pay top dollar for life-giving medication when people in Australia and Canada get them at fraction of the cost of brand name medicines? When a speaker, in addition to providing medical treatment, we need to do more to combat the terrible problem we have with non-communicable diseases like diabetes, lung cancer, and heart diseases. We will use taxation to encourage people to alter unhealthy behaviors and to fund prevention and awareness programs. In order to improve awareness and diagnosis, we will eliminate duties to zero on health diagnostic equipment and products, including diabetes diagnostic strips. We will increase the tax on cigarettes by 12.5% and add an additional health levy of 6%. Add to that the provision of free prescription medicine to persons earning less than $20,000 a year, we have the beginnings of a tax system that supports good health. The number of items available in the free medicine list as stated earlier has also increased from 70 to, 72 sorry, to 142, nearly double. We will increase the excise duty on sweet drinks such as sodas from 5 cents to 10 cents. These drinks are seductive because they taste good, but overconsumption of these drinks, which often have no nutritional value, can lead to long-term problems of obesity. Children who consume too many sugary drinks can set themselves up for a lifetime of poor health, obesity, and a near addiction to sugar. We will maintain the 32% duty in powdered milk in order to ensure that our Fijian dairy industry continue to thrive and produce higher quality milk and milk products. With the worldwide price of milk in decline, Fijian dairy farmers, Madam Speaker, as you speak, continue to get paid up to $1 a litre for farm gate price when their counterparts in New Zealand are getting half of that, if that at all. We want fresh milk produced locally by farmers. It is an important national interest and is of benefit to the Fijian people. Despite the decreasing world price of milk, Madam Speaker, we have noted, the price Fijians pay has remained the same because merchants who are importing these products have not passed on the savings. We have milk being sold in less than 50 cents in New Zealand, and the powdered milk they make, make has decreased substantially, but we do not see that being passed on to Fijian uh, consumers. This, of course, is unacceptable, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the health challenges that we confront, particularly the problem of non-communicable disease like diabetes, which has produced an epidemic of amputations, stand in contrast to the image we have of ourselves in active, <coughs> healthy, athletic people. Indeed, encouraging participation in sports and creating opportunities for physical, physical activity remain priorities for the government. Government has allocated $280 million to the Ministry of Health in 2016, an increase of $11 million over the 2015 budget level, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we have rearranged the Ministry's budget to clearly show the level of funding provided to each of the major urban hospitals. And the members of Parliament will see that, how we've broken that down. The health facilities in each of the divisions, as well as funding for drugs and medical equipment. The programs and activities are now more detailed. Fiji desperately needs more qualified doctors and nurses, and we have budgeted an increase of nearly $9 million to recruit additional 150 doctors and 200 nurses. $39.4 million is allocated to the Colonial War Memorial Hospital, or CWM, one of the largest hospitals in Fiji, an increase of $2.6 million, mainly to hire additional 36 doctors and 20 nurses in 2016, and to add to the 1,446 existing staff at the hospital. The 135,000 annual outpatients at the hospital and the average occupancy rate of 80% have required that government allocate an additional budget of $1.3 million for the hospital's operational expenses. 
The allocation will cover major expenses of power supply, laboratory test referrals, rations for uh, patients' hospitals, things like oxygen. A total of $39.8 million is allocated towards government's long-term plans to develop its health infrastructure in all four divisions. The majority of this allocation, about $21 million, will go towards the construction of the new 70-bed Bar Hospital. As mentioned, Madam Speaker, this project is being undertaken in partnership with the Bar Chamber of Commerce in the first arrangement of its kind. We believe it is a model for future development. Government has also provided for much-needed infrastructure development at CWM, including $1.3 million for the extension of CWM maternity unit. Other major developments planned for CWM include the construction of the new 200-bed maternity hospital and the new National Radiotherapy Center. Madam Speaker, we have increased funding for health services in all of Fiji's divisions. Central Division Health Services will receive $16.1 million, an increase of $1.4 million. Eastern Division will receive $8.4 million, an increase of $853,000. Western Division will receive $16.1 million, an increase of $1.7 million, and the Northern Division will receive $10.9 million, an increase of $1.7 million over the 2015-11 level. All of these increases are due to the hiring of more doctors and nurses. In addition, the Eastern, Western, and Northern Divisions will receive allocations of $23 million each to upgrade and maintain health facilities. Fiji Pharmaceutical and Biomedical Service Center is a centralized procurement center for the Ministry of Health and Medical Services for biomedical equipment and medical consumables distributed to all government health facilities. And it is allocated, five, it is allocated $57 million, sorry, an increase of $6.9 million over 2015. This increase will cover the purchase of three new vaccines, rotavirus, pneumococcal, and HPV at a cost of $5.7 million. For next year, we have increased the allocation for the free medicine program from $8 million to $10 million to provide approved prescription medication free to Fijians with an annual income that does not exceed individually $20,000. Madam Speaker, this government has made the improvement of education and, and just as importantly, equal access to quality education for the poor and people in remote areas a priority. The 2016 budget for the Ministry of Education stands at $432.2 million, which is an increase of $30.6 million over the 2015 level. In a major new initiative, government is providing $6.8 million to the Ministry to improve the teacher-student ratio by hiring 250 additional teachers. These funds will be spread evenly where the need arises, with the goal of reducing the teacher-to-student ratio to 1 to 40 in primary schools. We will raise the pay of the 250 existing teachers in primary schools to a base salary of $16,610 and upgrade the existing 150 teachers to a base salary of $23,411. Recognizing the constitutional rights of children with special needs and the extra burden of the care and education of parents and teachers, we have increased the special needs grant to special schools Sorry, we have increased the special needs grant to primary schools to $3.3 million, an increase of $565,000. This is for all the special primary schools, Madam Speaker. This includes an increase in the grant from, for each child from $250 to $500 a year. Because as we know, children in special schools need special care. In fact, Madam Speaker, we have a problem. We do not have teachers in Fiji who are trained to be teaching in an environment where you have children with special needs. Many of the schools have just teachers with ordinary qualifications without the upskilling and who are actually teaching these students. And we actually recognize the efforts and we thank them for their patience and we need more such teachers with fully trained emphasis in the curriculum. We'll also examine ways to provide additional grants for capital projects on a needs basis through a small grants project in these special schools. In addition, special aids and equipment for disabled persons, such as lenses, hearing aids, prosthetics, are now exempt from VAT. They have been imported duty-free for many years, and the elimination of VAT will make them even more affordable for the people who need them. We have allocated $8 million for the construction, upgrade, and maintenance of schools throughout the country. In addition, we have allocated $7.9 million to increase allowances for teachers in areas identified as very remote. We know many that do not want to go there. 
So we're giving them special allowances to go there in order to adjust for cost of living expenses, of, of course, in these locations. is another measure of our commitment to taking the benefits of education to every corner of Fiji and to leave no child without the chance to attend school with a qualified teacher. And a speaker, Fiji will need to dominate information and computer technology if we are to realize our ambitions in this world. And we begin with an allocation of $2 million for digital literacy. We have conjured our very good partnerships, including Microsoft and Intel. We've also increased the allocation for library programs to $2.5 million. And we'll begin digitizing the library collection in order to conform to international best practices. We have allocated $19 million to support the three technical colleges that were established this year and the eight new technical colleges to be established in 2016. Madam Speaker, technical education to prepare people for the skills of the modern workplace and the modern global economy is essential if we are to seize the future that rightly belongs to us. I wish to add, Madam Speaker, that building a healthy Fiji is not just about the job of the Ministry of Health. It requires good education and a good nutrition in school. In 2016, Madam Speaker, the free milk program will continue to be funded with an allocation of nearly $3.6 million. Fiji's heritage is priceless, Madam Speaker, and we have allocated $758,000 to upgrade the Fiji Museum and the World Heritage Stri Stri Structure sorry, in Levuka and $150,000 to rehabilitate the Thurston Gardens. This area now, Madam Speaker, is going to be a very well-developed area, including the construction taking place at Albert Park. Madam Speaker, the future of Fiji demands that we develop our universities and give our brightest young people as many opportunities as possible to reach their potential. The university age is an age of tremendous intellectual and personal growth, and we need the institutions and programs to channel that growth, and we need the institutions to nurture the potential we have in our midst. We will continue funding the highly successful TOPA scheme and the tertiary education loan scheme, and we have allocated $52.5 million for both schemes next year. We will also extend TELS to students with disabilities and for selected areas of postgraduate studies, in particular in medical studies. As part of its investment in education, government provides grants to a number of tertiary institutions in Fiji that allow them to provide world-class education and training for Fiji's young people. A total funding of $73 million is provided as higher education institution grants in 2016. The University of the South Pacific will receive an operating base grant of $30.2 million. Fiji National University's operating grant will be $36 million, and the University of Fiji will receive a grant of $2.3 million. In addition to his operating grant, FNU will receive a capital grant for work on its Lambasa campus in Madhuwata in the sum of $5 million for ongoing development and civil works at the campus site. FNU is also allocated $1 million for, prep for preparatory work to establish a teaching hospital in, Lot in Lotoka. The hospital will eventually train doctors, dentists, nurses, and other health workers for Fiji and the region and provide advanced medical and surgical procedures to local community. Madam Speaker, this is a very important need for Fiji if you are to bring our health care system to the standard we deserve. Madam Speaker, the development of our rural and maritime communities is essential if we are to achieve true equality of opportunity in Fiji and help our citizens realize their potential. We have challenges that many other countries cannot imagine, challenges of terrain and distance over water. These challenges require special efforts to overcome. The allocation of the Ministry of Rural Development and Natural Disaster Management is the focus of, of much of our efforts. But programs to bring our remote communities closer to the heart of Fiji can be found in the budgets of several ministries, including education, health, and transport. The Ministry of Rural Development and Maritime Development Sorry, the Ministry of Rural and Maritime Development and Natural Disaster Management is allocated $30.9 million in 2016, an increase of around $8 million over 2015. A sum of $6.8 million is provided for disaster management in 2016, an increase of $2.6 million over the 2015 budget allotment. We have maintained an allocation of $2 million for climate change mitigation to minimize the risk and the impact of disasters on vulnerable sectors of the economy particularly the flood-prone areas. This will also cover the relocation of the Tukuraki village, 
the Disaster Rehabilitation Fund of $1 million has also been maintained. A sum of $11.3 million is provided for overall management, research, analysis, and policy development. Part of the sum will be used for the Government Roadshow to Remote Rural Locations Program, a cost-effective way to bring together all government agencies and partners and the private sector to provide services from one single location. This has been a major success for little cost, only $200,000, Madam Speaker. The allocation for the Committee on Better Utilization of Land has been maintained at $7.8 million. A sum of $2.2 million is provided for the Commissioner Central for programs in the Central Division, including the construction of the Wainua Government Station and project preparatory work for upcoming, for upcoming divisional projects. The Commissioner Western will receive $5 million in an increase of $2.4 million over 2015. The increase is for divisional development projects, including $480,000 for the second phase of construction of the ADO Korolevu office, $915,000 for the construction of Votuolevu Health Center, and $500,000 for preparatory work for upcoming, for upcoming divisional projects. A sum of $1.2 million is also provided for the relocation of Nodula Health Center. The Commissioner Northern will receive $6.5 million, an increase of $2.9 million over the 2015 level. The increase is due to a number of new divisional development projects, including $442,000 for construction of quarters and general upgrading of the Tawake Nursing Station, $720,000 for the construction of staff quarters at Senganga Health Center, $400,000 for the construction of staff quarters at Nanduri Health Center, $720,000 for the construction of staff quarters at Nambuwalu Hospital, and $500,000 for preparatory work for upcoming divisional projects. An allocation of $2 million is provided for the construction of Kumbulao Government Station. The Commissioner Eastern is allocated $2.4 million for its programs, including $300,000 for construction of a suspension, suspension footbridge in Nalotu, $400,000 for foot crossing connecting Gasale, Naudiwai, and $500,000 for preparatory work for upcoming, upcoming divisional projects. A sum of $3.5 million is provided for rural infrastructure, including $1.5 million to upgrade non-cane access roads. Most rural farmers prefer farming in virgin lands, which are only available in remote areas with very poor roads. This project provides road access to those isolated rural areas. The self-help scheme, funded at $1.5 million, supports and encourages local initiative by assisting rural dwellers in the construction of small infrastructural and in income-generating projects. The scheme operates on a partnership basis in which the community provides one-third of the program cost and government provides two-thirds. The Rural Housing Unit, which procures, stores and delivers building materials for projects in rural areas and coordinates the Rural Housing Assistance Program, will receive $2.2 million. These funds will cover housing assistance to former Emperor Gold Mine employees. Rural Housing Assistance has been maintained at $1.4 million to help people in outer islands build affordable, Cyclone resistant homes. Government covers the cost of building materials under this program. Madam Speaker, Fiji has a more active and a more activist foreign policy than ever before. We have taken a leadership role in the United Nations and regional groupings, and we are making our voices heard loud. Fijians live and work around the world, and they often need government support and services. Fiji has 19 missions abroad, including relatively new embassies in, in the UAE and Brazil to reflect these realities, and we enjoy the respect, friendship of many other nations. The Ministry has provided $43.2 million to manage our foreign policy. An outlay of $550,000 will be necessary in 2016 to expand our new embassy in Abu Dhabi. We are also relocating our mission in Pretoria to Adias Ababa, where many other international and regional organizations are hosted. The total budget for Fijian missions in 2016 is $33 million. Madam Speaker, we are also enacting a new law to clarify the taxation of entities under the Diplomatic and Privileges and Immunities Act, which will be governed by agreements signed between government and multilateral international organizations. Madam Speaker, government has allocated $79 million in 2016 to peacekeeping missions for RFMF and Fiji Police Force keeping operations, which currently include more than 1,000 deployed personnel. This includes an increase of more than $6 million to cover an increase in the location allowance for the multinational force and observers. 
Madam Speaker, Fiji's contribution to the UN peacekeeping span more than 35 years and a part of a good, proud military tradition going back much further. This tradition and accomplishments and sacrifices of Fijians who have answered the call of duty since the First World War must be properly recognized, commemorated and even taught. Therefore, we have allotted $1 million towards the completion of the National War Memorial, National War M Memorial and the Military Museum, which will include a memorial to the unknown soldier. The Ministry of Defense, National Security and Immigration will also receive $750,000 to purchase hardware and software that will allow passports to be issued in the divisions and embassies. At the moment, Madam Speaker, if you're a Fijian living in Vanualevu or in the Western Division, to get a passport, you have to come to Suva. By this investment, they will be able to get the passports issued to them in Lambasa, in Madhuata, and in the Western Division in Latoka. This will be a significant convenience for ordinary Fijians living outside Suva will no longer have to bear the expense of traveling to the capital for a passport. Given the fact that there is economic growth and the need for more services, many of which are not available because Fiji does not have the expertise nor the skill set to provide the services, for this reason, we'll need to take a more liberal approach to immigration rules and work permits to remove unnecessary obstacles for foreigners such as issuance of work permits. Madam Speaker, only a few years ago, we had only one speech therapist in Fiji, and she was a foreigner. We don't even know whether she's there or not. But our children need access to speech therapists. Our children need the access to these kind of professionals. Our industry needs professionals. Even our hotel and catering industry needs these professionals. We bring them in, we train our people, and we improve the economy. Madam Speaker, the Fijian people need to feel and believe they are protected by the Fijian police force that is adequately staffed and trained and working to the highest professional standards. The budget of the Fiji police force has been increased by $5.8 million to $126.3 million. The increase is, is due to the addition of 108 positions, border police, prosecutors, support staff, and research officers. The border police will be placed in the Western Division, while the others will be deployed around the country. The sum of $2.4 million is allocated to build a new police station in Valelevu. Again, one of those projects that has been delayed because of the fact that land matters weren't sorted out. Our police force needs to be properly equipped and given the tools of modern police work. The sum of $732,000 has been provided for additional equipment purchases with quality assurance systems for the forensic bio and the DNA lab. The objective of the project is to ensure that those who commit crimes are convicted, innocent suspects cleared, and past wrongful convictions reversed. Government has provided $400,000 for communication equipment to migrate police communication system from analog to a full digital multi-band platform. It will be an expensive exercise requiring a five-year rollout period. The upgrade will allow full network connectivity among the four police divisions and the police headquarters for the first time. Phase two of the project will start in 2016 and will encompass procurement of digital equipment. Deployment will begin with the urban centers and the divisional command center and will be phased out to the rural and maritime stations. Purchase of traffic management equipment, budgeted at $350,000, will help make roads safer. The role of the traffic control unit is to enforce highway laws and educate the public about road safety. The project involves the purchase of laser speed detectors and equipment for testing drunk drivers. The purchase of new standard equipment is funded $400,000 to ensure that all police officers are properly equipped while performing their duties and standard equipment is needed to protect the officers from injuries, help them make arrests, and contain volatile situations. The sum of $307,940 is provided for the purchase of special operational equipment to be used for disasters, civil disturbances, and search and rescue operations. The purchase of analytical forensic chemistry equipment is funded at $400,000. The objective of the project is to purchase the laboratory equipment that will provide a strong capability in toxicology analysis and trace evidence analysis that will lead to greater accuracy and improved detection and conviction rates. These forensic chemistry capabilities, trace evidence analysis of things like paint chips, glass fragments and fiber were previously unavailable to the Fijian police force. This will allow for greater certainty when searching for illicit drugs, chemicals and poisons, which is a modern day problem for us. A total of $4.9 million, Madam Speaker, has been allocated to the Ministry in the 2016 budget which is the Ministry of Justice. 
This is an increase of $104,200 over the 2015 allocation, mainly due to 36 new positions at a cost of $2.6 million that have been regularized, regularized as established staff to support the registry offices and the digitization of records. The Ministry of Justice is making a major effort to bring its services closer to the people, making its processes and systems more user-friendly and develop a more effective and efficient record management systems. It is decentralizing services by establishing birth, deaths and marriages offices, or BDM commonly known, around the country to provide full service in Ba and Nandi at a level similar to those provided in Suva, Sabu-Sabu, Lotoka, Rakiraki and Lambasa. The department has allocated $200,000 to support these initiatives. It's all very service-driven, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Fiji's correction institutions must keep the public safe and maintain humane conditions with the, global of, with the goal of eventually rehabilitating inmates and reintegrating them into society. Government is committed to ensuring that dangerous convicts will remain in custody once they are sentenced. And we understand that we, as decent people, have an obligation, however, to uphold international standards and the moral code with which we are raising the way we treat those who have broken the law. The Fijian Correction Service has provided $39.4 million in the 2016 budget, an increase of $1.4 million. This increase is largely to fund, fund, sorry, this increase largely to provide funds for an additional 105 correction officers. The officer inmate ratio in Fiji has dropped from 1 to 10 in 2012 to 1 to 6, now close to the United Nations standard of 1 to 4. Government has allocated $4.5 million to complete construction of the Lotoka Remand Center, which will have quarters to accommodate 95 staff, and $1.8 million will go towards the construction of the new women's correction facility in Lotoka. To date, Madam Speaker, the only women's correction facility has been in Suva. So women from the Western Division will get removed from their children, from their families, and have to move to Suva. Now we have correction services in Lotoka, and eventually we're looking at having one in the Northern Division. Madam Speaker, the Ministry of Itauke Affairs has allocated $11.5 million, an increase of $1.3 million over its last allocation. The grant for the Itauke Affairs Board has been increased from nearly $3.4 million to nearly $4 million. Among the Ministry's many valuable projects is a cultural mapping program which aims to preserve and safeguard Itauke cultural heritage, and government has provided it $222,724. The program involves the collection and documentation of tangible and intangible Itauke cultural heritage in all the 14 provinces in Fiji. In 2016, the project will focus on Nanranga and Navosa province and transcribing 500 tapes in the Tailevu province. The information collected will be stored in the national inventory for traditional knowledge and expressions of culture. The verification of the data collected is an integral part of this exercise and therefore to speed up the ver verification process a sum of, of $33,440 is provided in the 2016 budget. Madam Speaker, the Constitution requires government to use its available resources to progressively ensure the right of every person to accessible and adequate housing. To do this, Madam Speaker, government has adopted a holistic approach to housing that is in large part carried out by the Department of Housing. The national housing policy emphasizes upgrading and resettlement programs for the less fortunate in Fiji. But it's more than just resettlement, Madam Speaker. When our Honorable Prime Minister gives a 99-year lease to squatters, as he did last Friday, we give them a stake in the economy, property that can improve and expand, property that can use as collateral for loans rather than deal with unscrupulous moneylenders property that they can lease or sell should the circumstances change. But Madam Speaker, we are not in the business of building impersonal government housing for people. We are engaging the private sector also to build viable communities where families can grow and prosper in the same way that we are working with the private sector in the, in the health sector and public enterprises. Madam Speaker, we will provide developer profit exemptions on a tiered approach, duty concessions on materials and subsidy by the state on project costs, depending on the size, to attract private sector investment in developing housing estates to fast track the provision of, of affordable housing to many Fijians as possible and in a quick fashion. The Department of Housing is provided with a total allocation of $30.8 million, which is an increase of $314,900 above the 2015 level. 
One reported increase is for the Langi Langi housing development, or commonly known as Jitu Estate, an initiative of the People's Community Network to provide decent and affordable housing for low-income households, especially squatters. And we have already seen the fruits of this, of this uh, relationship. Its allocation will increase from $2 million to $3.3 million to complete Phase 2 in 2016. Madam Speaker, government is providing a new allocation of $2.6 million to build 36 rental flats in Latoka to help meet the increased demand for rental units. The Housing Authority will receive $5 million for the Matavoli Voli project to develop a 45-acre parcel as a subsidy for low- and middle-income families in Nandi. People earning, <coughs> excuse me, People earning as little as $8,000 a year can now actually have a home of their own. Outlays for the upgrading of informal settlements along the Lamy Suva Nosori Corridor will decrease from $3 million to $1 million to reflect the progress already made. And the allocation for assistance to first time home homeowners will be maintained at $10 million. This is a program, Madam Speaker, that provides grants of $5,000 or $10,000 respectively to persons buying or building their first residential property. This will now expand, Madam Speaker, to assist those people who have now been given 99-year leases. So even though they may have a check and now they can get access to loan, we'll also, they'll also qualify for the $10,000 grant to build their first proper home. Madam Speaker, to assist low-income families and farmers and leaseholders will TLTB lease arrears we have allocated a sum of $500,000 to subsidize lease payment. Madam Speaker, there are many people who are in poverty who cannot afford this. They are the, at the cusp of losing their lease holdings. Government is going to step in, identify those people, and subsidize the lease payments to TLTB, which will go directly to the landowners. And as a sign of collaboration, the TLTB board has also set aside an almost equivalent amount of money to contributing towards the payment of this. Again, the monies will go from their savings to the, directly to the landowners. $200,000, Madam Speaker, has also been provided to review many of the anomalies and identify them, some of the administrative anomalies where sometimes renewals have been done without the landowner's consent or sometimes uh, approvals for lease have been given to would-be lessees, but they have not come through. This, in next year, Madam Speaker, will identify those processes travel around the country and make sure these anomalies are addressed. Madam Speaker, government is allocating $52.2 million to the Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Elevation in 2016, including an increase of $1.2 million for the Child Protection Allowance, which is designed to help provide care for disadvantaged children under kinship care and in residential homes. That allocation is now $3.2 million and an additional $500,000 is provided for the Child Protection Program, which involves awareness programs and implements the recommendations of the Conventions of the Rights of the Child, or the Convention of the Rights of the Child. In 2016, Madam Speaker, government will increase funding for the Social Pension Scheme from $8 million to $13 million, which will allow, as stated in our policy, in the Manifesto of Fiji First, to reduce the age of eligibility to receive this pension from 68 years to 66 years from July 2016. And we will maintain the allowance of $50 a month. The scheme provides pensions for people who have no other forms of income or pension and who have never been beneficiaries of a superannuation scheme. It's highly successful, Madam Speaker, and greatly appreciated. The disabled and elderly aged 65 and above will also continue to be assisted with bus fare subsidies to ease the cost of travel. The Poverty Benefit Scheme, Madam Speaker, which provides food vouchers of $50 a month and cash payment of $50 a month is allocated $22 million. Pregnant women in rural areas will continue to receive assistance through the food voucher program to reduce cases of malnutrition and complications during pregnancy. And $500,000 has been allocated for this program. Government has once again provided $500,000 for the ministry's welfare graduation program. This program is aimed at helping social welfare recipients move from welfare to workfare. Fiji does not wish to encourage a culture of dependency. On the contrary, we want to help people become self-sufficient. When people move from welfare to work, they regain the self-confidence, uh, self esteem, and indeed, dignity. Another $1 million is provided for the Women's Plan of Action, a program that works to develop employment in the formal sector, equal participation of women in decision-making, 
elimination of violence against women, and access to services for women. New funding of $170,000 is being provided for the domestic violence hotline and the very valuable and successful Fiji Women's Expo, which gives women artisans and entrepreneurs access to markets, will again be funded at half a million dollars. Madam Speaker, it goes without saying that our young people are Fiji's most precious asset. They are our future, and we must nurture them and help them grow in mind, body, and spirit, and help them to develop the skills, and perhaps more importantly, the attitudes they will need to have productive lives and contribute fully to the development of our nation. We have long known that participation in sport and in activities to engage the mind and channel intellectual energies do much to develop those skills and attitudes. Government will continue with its programs to promote sporting activities, develop sports facilities, encourage civic awareness amongst the youth, and build the capabilities of young people through multi-skill training. Government has allocated a budget of $22.5 million to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports Programs in 2016. This represents an increase of $5.8 million, which is mainly to allow youth sports teams to compete in a number of major events overseas in 2016. Funding for the Youth Capacity Building Program at $1 million will help widen the scope of the program and continue its seeds of success, empowerment training, youth feed the nations, and multi-skills mobile skills training programs. A budget of $706,000 is allocated to upgrade the five main youth training centers. Nassau Youth Training Center in Singatoga, the V2 Training Center in Kandavu, Nalemba Training Center in Maduata, Nangere Training Center in Sabu and the National Youth Band Center in Valelevu. These centers provide vital training for skills that give our young people building blocks for the workplace, entrepreneurship, and technical and tertiary education. The sports section budget. The sports section budget, Mr. Speaker, has been increased by nearly $5.7 million to $16.9 million, mostly due to the expansion of operations into the Eastern Division. The budget includes a grant of $1 million to continue funding of the National Sports Commission. Government has allocated $5.4 million to be administered by the FNSC to work with other sporting agencies and coordinate Fiji's participation in the major international sporting tournaments held in 2016. These, Madam Speaker, include the Rio Olympics, the Northern Rugby Tour, Pacific Nations Cup, Under-20 World Rugby, Pacific Challenge, and the National Rugby Championship. Government has provided an increased budget of $2 million to continue with work on the rural sporting complex of Vunise and Kandabu and Saiweke in now as part of the long-term program to develop top-level sporting facilities in rural areas. Madam Speaker, government has increased the allocation to the Ministry to continue developing rural, rural playing fields to $400,000. This will provide more opportunities for rural sporting talent to develop and to encourage more young people in rural areas to participate in sport and other kinds of organized physical activity. Four fields were completed in 2015, with 10 additional fields set for completion in 2016. Government has also allocated, Madam Speaker, $3 million for the upgrade and maintenance of the government-owned sports facilities across Fiji. Work was completed on Lawanga Park this year and is set to begin on the Fiji, on the Fiji Flower Mills Gymnasium in 2016. The Fiji Sports Council will prioritize its projects based on which facilities need urgent work and shall receive half a million dollars for its operations. Madam Speaker, we are justifiably, justifiably proud of the respect we have earned in World Rugby and of the way champion athletes like Vijay Singh have carried the flag of Fiji throughout the world. Madam Speaker, we can parlay Fiji's love of sports and its reputation into huge economic opportunities and even greater national prestige. Madam Speaker, we are happy to announce that the government will allocate $2.3 million to host the Crusaders versus Chiefs game on 1 July 2016 in the first ever Super 15s match ever played outside Australia, New Zealand or South Africa at the National Stadium on 1 July next year. With the exception, of course, the first match that was played outside was at Twickenham after the exceptional situation of Christchurch earthquake five years ago. This investment, Madam Speaker, will showcase to the world that we Fijians can do it to show Fijians that we can aspire to world-class status in anything we choose.
It will also bring home professional rugby to many of our aspiring rugby players. Madam Speaker, we'll also dedicate $9 million to continue hosting the Fiji International Golf Tournament. FNPF will also refurbish and upgrade the Natandola Bay Championship Golf Course to be designed by Vijay Singh to meet the high standards of the Professional Golfers Association and to ensure that our tournament becomes an institution on the PGA Tournament. Put simply, it makes Natandola a more enjoyable golf course and, more importantly, for our fund members, real estate around it becomes more attractive. And speaking of Vijay Singh, Madam Speaker, we are also pleased to announce today that he has agreed to represent Fiji in the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, where golf will be played in the Games for the first time. Madam Speaker, we add to that allocation nearly $1.4 million to host 16 international sporting events in 2016, including the Oceania Weightlifting and Swimming Championships. We believe we are well on way to making Fiji a premier destination for major international sporting events, and that is good, of course, for all Fijians. These events require an upgrading of existing sporting facilities, including Vodafone Arena and the hockey turf, which is allocated $3 million. Madam Speaker, we'll also continue to fund the bringing in of professional coaches for the various sporting uh, groups in Fiji, including uh, netball, rugby, football, uh, cricket, to name a few, and of course, boxing. Madam Speaker, moving on to agriculture, agriculture is the backbone of the country's economy, accounting for around about 9.3% of Fiji's GDP. We cannot overstate the importance of agriculture for rural development, food security, and better national health. Government's agricultural policy is focused on helping Fijians provide for themselves and their families, and we pay, sp and we pay special attention to competitive exports. We promote farming as a business, as opposed to farming just as a way of life. Farming today is a highly specialized occupation, as our Minister of Agriculture will tell us. A farmer today is part entrepreneur and part scientist. He invests cash and sweat in his business and toils long hours. Yet he can see all his investment and labor wiped out by drought, disease, or an unforeseen weather event. Our farmers know their business, and government is taking a bottom-up approach to agricultural policies and programs. The ministry listens to farmers, responds to their needs, and keeps an eye out for opportunities in the market. The Green Growth Framework for Fiji makes clear the need to ensure food security by farming more efficiently and managing competing demands for land with efficiency and sensitivity. The 2016 budget for the Ministry of Agriculture has been increased from $64.9 million in 2015 to $76 million in 2016. Government has provided funding support in areas of our competitive advantage that we believe will increase production, farm incomes, and of course GDP. Mr. Speaker, this is all about modernizing the agricultural sector, and one important step government is taking is to revive the Agricultural Marketing Authority, which helps small farmer, smallholder farmers in remote and isolated areas sell their produce. The authority buys produce from farmers in rural, interior, and maritime areas and sells it to local and overseas markets. And this important program promotes agricultural activity among these communities. The authority will receive increased funding of $5.6 million in 2016 to fund infrastructure improvements and to ensure that the farmers are, we are helping understand and meet the new international standards for exports. To further assist small farmers and farmers in the most remote areas, government will provide an allocation of $800,000 to purchase new agricultural implements and machinery like tractors and cultivators. This will bring farming in Fiji into the 21st century by mechanizing processes that are currently done by hand, saving farmers both time and money. Farmers can apply in groups for a government subsidy that will allow for the purchase of specialized machinery. The land clearing program has been allocated half a million dollars in 2016. The program assists farmers by subsidizing the preparation of land for farming. The subsidy covers 90% of the cost of land development and will help them expand farming operations by reducing their costs. In addition, a sum of $1 million is also provided for the Rural and Outer Island Agricultural Development Program, which focuses on projects that improve food security in remote and maritime areas by constructing the necessary infrastructure. Forty-five projects were completed in 2015, and we have targeted an additional 50 for 2016. Government has allocated $300,000 to promote agriculture 
through Fijian trade missions in the European Union and China. And the Ministry conducts weekly demand surveys in the USA and the Australian markets. This is to improve information on supply and demand in import and export markets. We are pleased to report that the International Fund for Agriculture is providing $2 million through a four-year loan to fund the Fiji Agricultural Partnership Program, which will support agribusiness in the provinces of Ba, Nanoga Novosa, and Naitasiri through 2019.